Hi, it's Amanda May with Artith Design, and I'm here to do my floss tube video this week. I'm so excited. You know, I'm here trying to be a thread that connects historic needlework to contemporary needle art, and I cannot believe it is my 11th episode, and I'm so happy to be here. This is Raji Pug. He's my senior pug, loves to snort and shed his, his hair. He's my little black pug. It is October, happy October. It's it's getting close to Halloween, which means he does not want to get dressed up. Yes, I do have <laughs> costumes for my dog <laughs> and accessories. What well, what do I where do I begin? We're oh, we're gonna start with questions and answers. We're gonna do save the stitches and I save the accessories type of thing and then my current works in progress. And I wanna show you a couple books that I found, not library books, actual books that I found and purchased. And I'm just, I'm just really excited to be here. It is October and coming up is the world premiere of the new season of Doctor Who. I am very excited. I am a Whovian. <laughs> I'm looking forward to after uh, Halloween is over, I start putting up my Christmas decorations November 1st. And I'm excited to put up my Doctor Who tree. And I have considered <laughs> actually putting it up because this Saturday is the world premiere of the new season. And I thought, well, maybe I should just put my tree up now to celebrate all things outer space and Doctor Who, you know, dinosaurs on a spaceship. So I have dinosaurs, I have the uh, the angels, I have the TARDIS, I have the TARDIS lights, I have the constellation fabric. I've got all the goodies. So we'll see what I end up doing. <laughs> all right, we're going to start with uh, the questions and answers. Hi, sweetie. Hi. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start with questions and answers this, this week. My uh, first question was, Amanda, when are you coming out with your your uh, stitching journal that you talked about. Well, I'm hoping that it will be out this month. I am working on the cover art and I I just kind of hit a roadblock with my cover art and that's where we're at. <laughs> and I'm hoping to have my pattern this out this month with the um, specialty threads from Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. So that will be uh, coming out this month and I'm really excited about that. I'm I am giddy. I am stitching it and I all I want to do is show it. I want to put it on Instagram. I want to talk about it and show you everything. But at the same time, I want it to be a surprise and debut it and have it just be oh, phenomenal. So I don't know how model stitchers and how other designers do it. I mean, I want to show you all the things all the time. I don't know how people keep these things a secret. I really don't. I just... I want to show you the flosses. I do. I want to show you. Can I show you at least the color palette? That's. Yeah, I, I'm going to show you the color palette. I'm not showing you the design or anything. I'll show you the color palette. OK, 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 OK. Do you see that beautiful heavenly goodness? Do you see that? That's all Nancy Turner's hand dyed fiber. And these two are custom. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. <laughs> so my questions were, when am I going to be premiering all that? And that's this month, October. October is awesome. We have uh, the Inktober happening. We have all things crafty goodness for Halloween. We have, there's a SAL going on right now, a stitch along with the Cricut collection. This awesome pattern. I got this one at Dines to Stitch in Virginia Beach uh, when I was there. I love it. I have the pattern. I don't have the fabric. <sighs> but I am going to live vicariously through everyone who is stitching it because I love this pattern. I bought it before even knowing there was going to be an SAL on it. And it's awesome. Okay. Oh, I want to show you something really cool before we get to save the stitches. And that is I went to a big box store this week. Uh, the first part of it rhymes with haul. And the, you know, instead of mart, you know, rhymes with mart is art. So I went to haul art. 
this week and I picked up, you ready? The 30th anniversary edition of Hocus Pocus. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so excited. I was just going to buy the regular version, not the Blu-ray. I mean, I grew up with Hocus Pocus. I am the millennial early 30-somethings. When this movie came out, I, ugh, and I still love it. So I was just going to buy the regular, like, $5 version of the, of the movie. And my husband's like, no, you need to buy the Blu-ray. I'm like, oh, okay, fine. You're right. You're always right. I'll buy the Blu-ray. <laughs> I get home. I open it up. Stitching Friends. Are you ready for this? Look at what is inside the 30th anniversary edition of Hocus Pocus. Do you see that? It is a pin. Are you kidding me? I'm dead. I am so excited. I'm like, do I wear it? Do I make it into a needle minder? Something crashed. <laughs> I am just so excited. Anyway, <laughs> I say hocus pocus and then something just fell somewhere. <laughs> okay. Woo. Anywho, I'm so excited. I got a Hocus Pocus pen with my Blu-ray at the store that rhymes with Hall Art. <laughs> okay. All right. Save the stitches. All right. I saw this frame and I thought it was tremendous. And I saw it behind like a bunch of other art frames. And I'm like, I want that frame. I want that frame. And then I pull it out. It had a cross stitch already on it, people. Are you kidding me? Look at this frame I got. All right, this is how I saw it, okay? I was like, oh, that's cool. That would be really cool. Do like the Priscilla Fi, do the chalkboard paint and do that because I have a lot of like colonial spindle stuff in my house. It's like my house is that cross between early American spindle and mid-century modern. <laughs> so it's very eclectic. Anyway, I saw this and went, Oh, I love it. And then, ah, da, 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 da. look at that. I don't know anybody named Harrison and established 1983. I mean, I'm thinking I'm going to put it up on eBay. You never know. There could be the Harrisons and then this could be charted and changed or you could put something over it. I mean, right? I love the frame. The, the the piece is really nice. It's backstitched and lovely. I mean, it's got the the grapes and the mallard. <laughs> anyway, I just I felt like it was very serendipitous. I talked last week about finding and coming across a lot of milk glass, and I I now have a newfound love and respect for milk glass that I never had before. I picked up this little vase and I put my scissors in it. <laughs> I mean, it's silly. If it's just a nice little melt glass, put some scissors in it. I got, I didn't find really any cross stitch this week, but I did find some Halloween themed textile goodies and the accessories. So that's some of the accessories. This is another thing. Okay. I love, love the cross stitch designs that are inside the little boxes, like the apothecary boxes, or what are they called? The, um, the stamp, the typesetting boxes, all of those really cool, the little compartments. And I know Teresa Kitten Stitcher, she had a nice display that she showed. And I want to say like Kathy Barrick, has done some designs. I just thought they were so cool. And then at the store, I found this box. I mean, hashtag Rusty Krusty. I could not believe it. The ladies are like, Amanda, why do you keep buying the most random things? I'm like, because they're awesome. That's why. And I'm trying to explain to these lovely people what it is I'm trying to do. And they're like, whatever, just give me, just, Give me the money. I'll give you just, just, what's that, that crafter over there? She just buys everything. <laughs> so 
So look at the back of this box, okay? Look at this. It's got the old like price tag. It's all like water damage. It doesn't smell though. I'm like, this doesn't smell musty. I'm looking, look at this paper that is on this box. Look at the lock. <gasps> I'm like, whoa, get out of town. It's like got the patina, the age, the paper's coming off here. It has no lid, but look at that. Do you see that? It still has like dust and stuff. I haven't cleaned it yet, but I am dead. I don't know. I don't know if I should use it as a display to put like little sewing accessories and stuff in or to do a cross stitch design. But see that the thing with doing a cross stitch design with this is it's not like I can tell you all to go out and buy this exact one. Like this is the only one I have ever seen ever. So I don't know, I don't know what to do. Comment below if you tell me, do I do, do I design something or do, do I use this as a display piece? I mean, I kind of feel like the Field of Dreams with Kevin Costner that if you build it, they will come. I feel like if I buy the display case stuff, if I buy all these gorgeous things, that means I'm prepared to go to Nashville. I mean, I'm thinking about it. Okay, anyway, so I got this box and then from across the room, like my eyes go vroom, and I see this cigar box. Cigar box? Tobacco paraphernalia. I see this and I'm thinking craft box. I know that like the old school cookie tins that come out around Christmas time <laughs> was like grandma's sewing box. Well, around here in the mid-Atlantic states, like if you see a cigar box or a cigarette box, you're like, is that a little junk drawer box? Yes, it is. I got this for $1 at a, at a, like a, a store, antique store. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so excited that my head, I'm thinking faster than I can speak. All right. So inside... I got all these awesome little junk drawer sewing goodness things. I got a bell, put a bell on it. I got, which I could not believe. Look at what I found, okay? I found inside is a pin for, I don't know if you can see it, the Veterans of Foreign Wars. That's where I met my husband. I met my husband at the Veterans of Foreign Wars. And then here's the pin, Veterans of Foreign Wars. Hello. I got, you know, it's got, I got, I have, I have a lot of these fun little ruler things. And the Singer Foots. I haven't done any research. Oopsie. I haven't done any research on what models these are. This I thought was awesome. I don't know. It has no maker's mark on it, but it's like an old belt hook um it's got got some more feet in here some needles the dressmaker's buttonhole guide and it's all rusty crusty and then boy scouts of america this okay so i really like sewing ephemera and i really like uh, vintage buttons that are still carded you know on the cards and stuff but I have never seen original pins still in the package look at this perfect pins model pins number eight size and they're small and I think they're really neat I've never seen that and they were the company says the perfect arts company out of Baltimore Maryland it's original in package. I'm not opening that. That is amazing. That's an amazing piece of needle art history for Maryland. And I love it. So I don't know. I was thinking about doing some research and seeing about this company and seeing kind of the history of it and what, what maybe what year this was created. Anywho, I love junk drawers. Oh, look at this. Okay. Look at this tie clip. Oh, and it's got... 
old school stuff. All right, <laughs> look at the font. I think I'm like so geeky when I look at stuff. I'm like, look at that font. My husband's like, what? I go, the font, F-O-N-T. Isn't that a lovely font? <laughs> it's an awesome tie clip. And anyway, I just, I just think it's really cool. <laughs> So I got a junk drawer, sewing junk drawer stuff, a VFW pin, some feet, some just some goodies. And then also I found a little jar of broken jewelry parts and kind of ephemera stuff, which I just love. You can use this stuff for your finishing, for mixed media, for putting art on all the things <laughs> so I got that and I I got oh I got this look at this tray so another thing display to put stuff on maybe take to a trade show if you have it if you build it they will come if you start thinking about it visualizing it putting it out into the universe you will go anywho okay I got under save the stitches now, I wanted to show you a couple of the, the, the Halloween stuff that I got. And I got this sweater and the lady would not sell it to me. Like, I understand that it's stained. I understand that it's not perfect, but I would love to have it. And you're like, well, what are you gonna do with it? I said, I'm gonna add more puffy paint to it. Clearly, more puffy paint. So here we go. She didn't wanna sell it to me because it was stained. Hello, look at that candy corn. Look at that. Ah! <laughs> I love it. So I don't know if it's gonna fit me, if you know what I mean, but <laughs> I can cover up the staining. It's got some yellow staining. I'm thinking I can add some puffy paint to it and maybe do a display thing or set it out or maybe next year, maybe it'll fit. I don't know, but I had to, I had to bring it home. The next thing I got, I, I I believe I told you all that I just absolutely love aprons, like love aprons. And I got this smock apron and it's got, look at the little teddy bears on it. I'm so excited and it's got the two front pockets. So I got this. I'm really, I've already used it to do the dishes. So I just, I love it. I was really happy to find it. And then my last treasure that I found this week is a vintage child's Halloween costume. Okay. I couldn't buy this fast enough. I'm like, take my money, take it. And my kids are with me and they're like starting to fight over who gets to wear it. I don't know. All right, here we go. You see this? Look at this little vest. Oh my gosh. It's got, look at the stitching. Isn't that so fun? <laughs> and then look at these little pants. Are you ready for this? <laughs> oh my gosh. I love these pants. I wish they came in my size. <laughs> I just love them. Anywho, they've got the, the little button. They've got more of the, the, the embellishment. I mean, this is done, the stitching, it's machine stitched. I mean, it's not, but it's, it's, it's vintage stitching. I don't know the year that this, this outfit was made, but I, I love it. I love it so much. Halloween is my favorite holiday. Halloween, Christmas, Valentine's Day. But I love Halloween because of the costumes, the ingenuity, the handmade crafts. And then even just the awesome stuff you can find at stores like the dollar store. I know Debbie from Snug Harbor Crafts just did a really awesome little tutorial on using deco mesh to make a wreath. Out of dollar store items, like $1.00. 
and I was cracking up because before Debbie even did her her tutorial I started making a wreath because hello Pinterest I love you I started making with a dollar store hula hoop I started making a wreath with deco mesh and let me see if I can lean back and I'm gonna probably like add um, I was thinking like witch's hat and stuff I've got to equalize the weight better and this will hang outside and I'm gonna like wrap this with burlap and work on that so before Debbie even came out with hers I was all things deco mesh I'm having way too much fun with deco mesh so I just like I said I just I love Halloween I love the craftiness I love all the fun stuff oh and there's I have this this sweater it will not fit me but I had to get it anyway vintage uh one of my uh soda brands that I love it's vintage Pepsi look at that I mean how cool is that I love it I just I love Halloween I do <laughs> all right that's my save the stitches for this week some of my crafty stuff I oh what am I working on this week well I have not I've been working on my new design with my Victorian motto sampler threads so I have not worked on my pumpkin pie pie spice sampler she is still headless as I said last week the scooby-doo headless specter I will get there with her and I, I want to get her done before before Halloween is up so I can have her and display her proudly kind of like my Edgar Allan Poe piece I've got back there I've got my create magic up I want to get that done the current projects I'm working on I, like I said I want to show but I, I can't <sighs> all right I want to show you though something that I was experimenting with to kind of show that not all designs come to fruition and I want to show you that this is a piece that was the jumping off point for me making my pumpkin pie spice sampler gal I dyed this fabric it's Ada 14 count I dyed it using Thai T T H A I Thai T which has got that deep orange look to it I did I, I experimented with the Thai tea to get the orange I experimented using making colonial knots just kind of stitching around working with stuff I experimented with my metallic threads and kind of working on hashing out some Easter design stuff which I ended up making and publishing and then this is the piece no matter what I do to it, I can't get it the way I want it. And I, I'm, I'm done. I, I can't, that it's an exercise in learning <laughs> that not all ideas come to fruition. This was the start of my pumpkin spy, spice sampler. I charted her and the more I tried to work on her, the worse it got. And I think it might be because I used a scrap and it's a test piece and I got emotionally invested in it because I put a lot of time and stitching into it but she was going to be holding a big cup of coffee which is brew she's blowing in the wind there's pumpkins little samplers and then all of her dress is metallic stitched with DMC metallic threads blended blended with DMC 520 trying to work on my design program to add blending and then I just realized that's that's too much work for such a small little pattern so <laughs> I wanted to show you that not all ideas come to fruition I might chart her later maybe holding a big cup of coffee different colors and I'm not going to use metallic threads so I want to show that not all ideas are glorious and it's okay to make mistakes and I'm okay with that what I did learn is how to blend with metallic threads and regular threads and I learned how pretty the tie tee is to dye for Halloween for the natural dye for the orange.
so the more you know. All right, I wanna show you two of the books that I got this week, I purchased. The first one, because you know, I need more hobbies. <laughs> I got the complete book of rug hooking. Awesome. And it says it's a extremely useful guide to virtually all aspects of rug hooking. It's the most complete book in the field offering detailed coverage of a host of topics. The American tradition of rug hooking, basic directions, how to transfer designs, how to hook those flowers, leaves, fruit, animals and birds, and how to hook abstract designs how to dye fabrics, and much more. Hello. Yes, please. <laughs> so, now, rug hooking, punch needle, embroidery, make all the things. <laughs> the next one is a cross-stitch book, and I loved this advertisement, and I thought it was really neat, and I'm like, ooh, look at that. Printed in Japan. And what I really like about this book is it is, it's a cross-stitch design book from Japan from 1975. And the only writing, <clears throat> the only writing in it is to tell you what DMC colors they're using for the designs. I mean, really, how awesome is that? Because cross-stitch transcends borders and boundaries. Cross-stitch is international. You can speak the language of cross-stitch without ever uttering a word, right? Flowers of the season. Look at that. So they have the colored models in here and then they have the, the charts. But I just, I love mid-century modern design and it reminds me a lot of Satsuma Street, a lot of her artwork. And I love bright and cheery. And it, this book just had my name all over it. So again, my, my acquisition that I love, my new book. It's been a joy this week. I'm going to insert the giveaway winner from Floss Tube episode number nine right here. Congratulations again. Thank you all for entering my giveaway. This week's question is what are you most looking forward to this month? This month of October. Are you participating in the Inktober ink sketch designs? Are you participating in the Darktober? Are you participating in the Cricut Collection SAL? Are you sketching new designs in your sketch and stitch graph paper book? Are you excited about dressing up, making a costume? What are you excited about this month? Comment below, let me know. I love reading your comments. You are all such a joy. Thank you for your kind words, your messages. You can always uh, message me. Uh, I'll put my email below. You can comment on this thread. I, I love this community. Thank you for all that you do. Uh, much love, be well, and I'll see you again next week.